<clears throat> all right, so moving on, let's talk about reduction between both acid chlorides and esters. Again, these are all carbonyl derivative uh, or carbonyl based compounds. Remember what an acid chloride is, is it something that looks like this? There's a carbonyl there and there's a chlorine attached to it. So there's two types of, of reagents that you can do with this and this is kind of confusing when you actually think about it. We've already talked about the whole, I mean, you know what the, the product of this is going to be. It obviously contains a, a, a good leaving group, but there's other things that you can create with it. So for example, if I wanted to create a primary alcohol, well, obviously you know what I'm going to use. I'm going to react this with lithium aluminum hydride in water, and that's what I'm going to use for that. If I want to get out of this acid chloride reagent, though, say I wanted to make an aldehyde for, for whatever reason, well, remember we have that chlorine that can act as a leaving group, what I have to use is a, a much more, I guess, a milder reagent. Because remember that when we draw the mechanism behind each and every one of these. But the re reagent that we use is lithium, it's aluminum. And then I'll put this whole thing in parentheses. So there's an oxygen there, carbon there, CH3 there, and a 3 there. And I believe my book makes the distinction of using brackets to clarify that. But what I get out of this reaction at the end of the day is going to be just an, a good old fashioned aldehyde. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna write that out. But this is going to be a general mild reagent whereas this lithium aluminum hydride is a super strong reducing agent. It's very good at its job. And, and I don't know if you remember whenever we talked about this but any type of a metal hydride reaction uh, with, with either one of these is going to give a primary alcohol with either an acid chloride or, or an ester whenever we talked about the identity of Z and I, I use that in the abstract. So now let's talk about esters. So all esters have a structure like this with a carbonyl carbon attached to it. There is an OR group there and there are two types of reactions that we can run. Whoa! There are two types of reactions that we can run under that under these conditions, at least two reagents that we can treat it with. The first one we can do is we can treat it with lithium aluminum hydride. The other reagent that we can treat it with is, and it doesn't actually ever give the name of it, but it's uh, substituted as this. Obviously th this being much a very strong reagent gives us a primary alcohol, and this being more on the mild or less reactive side gives us a aldehyde. So, cool. Moving along in this little playlist I have of reduction reactions, one of the things that we can reduce, or another carbonyl compound that is readily going to undergo reduction reactions is carboxylic acids. And we've done, I think, videos on those as well. But that's your generic structure for a carboxylic acid. The thing that's interesting about it is because it's so it's such a strong acid, the only type of reagents that you can use with this is again lithium aluminum hydride in water to generate exactly what everything else has generated, a primary alcohol. Alright, so moving on to Let's talk about reduction of amides. So what is an amide? Well, it's, as you can probably guess, there's a carbonyl compound in it. And then there's an NH2, that H could also be R's, doesn't really matter, but that's your generic structure for that. What you get whenever you re react an amide with lithium aluminum hydride, and then obviously, of course, you do this reaction in water, is actually a very unique product called an, an well, it, you reduce the amide to an amine. So I guess if I were to draw this in the abstract form, that carbonyl group is totally reduced down to CH2 there. So let's draw out the mechanism behind this. Okay, so I could not fit that on the same page as this, but let's just talk about how amides over here can be reduced by lithium aluminum hydrides to form amines. So 
This is actually kind of an extensive reaction. I'll see if I can fit this on this page here with my overall reaction there. So you have your carbonyl group there. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw these out like this, and you'll see why in a sec. There's a hydrogen there. There's a hydrogen there. And let's just say that we run this reaction with um, lithium aluminum hydride, but which, what happens, you're, you're not going to be able to guess this. So I'm just going to draw it as aluminum ALH4 because it's, yeah, the limit, lithium is just a, a spectator ion in this reaction. And I'll draw my electron pushing arrows in the magenta. <clears throat> what you get out of this, and I, I never in a million years could guess this, is a proton transfer reaction where it steals a proton from the NH2. And instead of going to this and then back to this, one of the lone pairs actually, because remember these are three-dimensional molecules, moves into the pi bond. And this is all a concerted reaction. And as that pi bond is being formed, oxygen or carbon does not want to break its octet rule. It is not comfortable doing that. It moves the lone pair up to the top. Okay. So what do we get out of this? Well, we now have our next step. That's our next step of our reaction. But let's also focus your attention up here. We lost a hydrogen from this. How do we lose a hydrogen? Well, what happens when two hydrogens... Uh, come together. Remember when we talked about these, they're basically just hydride nucleophiles. What you get out of this is you have H2, and that's of course in the gaseous state, that's going to totally just float right on out of this. So this is obviously a very uh, equilibriating, uh, equilibrium favored uh, reaction here. And so what's interesting about this is now that aluminum has lost uh, its, its hydride, it has a kind of a positive formal charge. And there's an empty p orbital, I believe, that is open and ready to be reacted. And the, ox the oxygen having a negative formal charge is going to react with the aluminum hydride, or ALH3, to give the next step. Pretty goofy looking, right? But the next step after you run your reaction in this, and this is where it gets kind of frustrating, we're obviously, <clears throat> when you're doing these, assume that you're having excess amounts of your reducing agent, or just more than just one equivalent of your reducing agent. So what we have is a secondary reaction with another lithium aluminum hydride, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw it like this, because I'm kind of running out of room. And as it goes in, and it does kind of what I expected to have done at the very beginning of attacking the carbon, neocarbon, because remember that this is partially positive, this is partially negative. If you're not understanding that, then uh, draw out the resonance structures behind that. And what you get out of this, though, is the nitrogen, or the lone pairs, or ah, from the pi bond here, moves to become a lone pair on the nitrogen atom. Okay, so after we form a lone pair on the nitrogen, this is where things kind of get interesting and are just kind of just odd to think about. The lone pairs, once they moved, go right back down. And instead of just, I don't know why it, did, it didn't just go from there to leaving off there, but anyways, lone pairs go back here. And carbon can't break its octet rule, so the oxygen actually pulls on, it's a good enough leaving group at this point to just go ahead and leave. And so what you get out of this reaction is in your next step, you're going to have, I'm just going to go ahead and just draw it all out like this, is oxygen, aluminum, ALH3, that's existing there in that form. We're, we're not really worried about that, having a negative formal charge here. Um, but what we, the more important, I guess, as product out of this is uh, one of the more important intermediates. So there's a carbon there, there's an hydrogen, our, our group there, sorry. There is a hydrogen here. You get this in your in your reaction combat. I've never seen a molecule like this. What this is known as is whenever you have a carbon with a, a double bonded to a nitrogen, we call this an imine or amine. It's spelled with an I. I don't know how it's pronounced specifically. But again, this is ran in excessive amounts of lithium aluminum hydride. And so I'm just going to go ahead and designate my hydride nucleophile. I'm just going to say H3 here, and then there's a hydrogen there, and it's going to come in and attack. Again, drawing the resonance structures will totally help you see this, but it goes ahead and attacks at the carbonyl carbon. And once again, we have the pi bond moving away to give us uh, our next product. And so what this gives us 
we have and attached to that I'm gonna go ahead and switch colors just to show that that's the one that I added there's a hydrogen there so as if this wasn't frustrating enough we're also running this in water you may have been wondering I drew that this is happening in water and I haven't drawn a single water molecule taking place yet at the very end once you get this weird looking species you have a proton transfer reaction you get that there which I don't know if you know what that is but that is an R attached to a CH2 attached to a N H2 so this right here I'll go ahead and I'll circle it in magenta but this is your final product of that reaction. Okay, so now, last thing that I'm going to talk about, and we'll be done with the whole, I guess, redox, uh, or at least somewhat of the redox re uh, reactions in this chapter, is aldehyde oxidation. So what we have here is we're taking an aldehyde, we're doing some type of an oxidation reaction, and what we're going to get out of that usually will be some form of a carboxylic acid. That's, that's not too unusual. We've talked about this in other ways. So what are the things that we can do with this? Or what are the ways that we can make this happen? Well, one of the ways that we can do this is we can treat our aldehydes with the reagent, which this should be review to you, CrO3, um, H2SO4 and water, something that's going to form that CRO, the chromic acid there. Um, or what's really weird about this is we can also use potassium permanganate. Remember, whenever we were talking about a reduction of benzene reaction or benzene compounds. But one of the problems with the, with both of these reagents is that they are not. Uh, they're not very selective in the way that they work. We've talked about using these reactions, both of these reactions, in other chapters where we use them for different purposes or for kind of similar purposes, but still, they're not going to be specific just to the aldehyde. If you just want to oxidize the aldehyde, if you just want to have oxidation at the aldehyde and leave everything else alone, The reagent that you use is kind of different, and I'm going to go ahead and just switch colors to reiterate what I'm talking about here. So if you just want to oxidize the, the aldehyde, what you'll use is, and I'll just, I'm going to give a real life example of, of this conversion here. This is reactions that we've already talked about, but these reagents you're not going to be familiarized with. AgA2O, and we run that in a solution of ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so why would you do this? Well, say I have a, a ring system here, and there's an OH group attached to that. And I have a hydro, uh, aldehyde group here. And I, I don't want to get rid of that OH group. Those, those are really good for, for lots of other reactions here. So say I, I want to keep my alcohol, or I'm just going to say keep my OH, I treat that with this, and that's the way that you do that. My result of this reaction is there, and I get to keep my OH. If I were to run the same reaction with that, remember when we talked about really uh, each and every one of these, they're going to be reactive with the alcohol species. And that's something that we talked about in the previous chapters. So.